In the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, there is a supermassive black hole feeding on nearby stars. It's called Sagittarius A star. And if a giant gravitational monster slowly eating the galaxy isn't terrifying enough, there's another cosmic monstrosity lurking around it. Is it possible that one day they would get a little too close and collapse on each other? What would be left of the Milky Way if they did? Would there be even a slight chance that the Earth could get out of that safely? This is what if. And here's what would happen if a magnetar collided with a black hole. This monstrosity creeping through the Milky Way is a remnant of a giant exploded star. But it's not just any remnant. It's an extremely dense and very magnetic collapsed stellar core. A magnetar. Let me refresh your knowledge of magnetar. Times more massive than our Sun reaches its expiration date and explodes in a beautiful supernova. Much of that star is gone, but the dense core of it remains. Most of these remnants become neutron stars. They spin very fast, usually a few times per second, and they're composed of neutrons. Some neutron stars have such strong magnetic fields that they emit electromagnetic radiation from their poles. That makes them pulsars, and you can observe them with a telescope when their poles face the Earth. Only a few pulsars develop such an extremely powerful magnetic field. They become the strongest magnets in the universe, the magnetars. They spin once every 10 seconds, but their magnetic field is a hundred times stronger than that of a neutron star. If one of those magnets came halfway between the Moon and the Earth, well, it wouldn't be pretty. But would it be as bad from a distance of 26 light years away? Well, what I'd like to know is, would a magnetar swallow a black hole, or would a black hole gobble up a magnetar? The collision of these two giants wouldn't end up in an explosion, but in a quiet cosmic merger stretched over billions of years. Although magnetars are incredibly powerful, they would lose the battle with a black hole. Depending on the trajectory of the magnetar, as well as the size and mass of both the magnetar and the black hole, the magnetic monster would be eaten up either whole or slowly, piece by piece. As the magnetar was being torn apart by the black hole, it would be sending gravitational waves throughout the universe, disturbing the curvature of space-time. Once the black hole consumed the magnetar, its mass would increase and expand its event horizon. And thanks to this expansion, more and more stars would be flung into its dark density. The black hole would be slowly eating our galaxy, star by star. Eventually, after quadrillions of years of star consumption, the black hole could gobble up the Milky Way, all of it. By that time, humanity would most likely be long gone anyway. Nearly 800 million light years away, something has been forming. Scientists aren't exactly sure what it is, but have dubbed it the Black Neutron Star. And now, it's headed for Earth. What is this strange object? How would it change our planet? And what makes this new discovery so dangerous? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a black neutron star entered our solar system. What is a black neutron star exactly? Well, scientists aren't entirely sure just yet, but they do have some theories. It all has to do with this mass gap that's found in space. When a star dies, two things can happen. If the star is more than five times the mass of the Sun, 
it becomes a black hole. And if it's under two and a half times the mass of our sun, it becomes a neutron star. But what exactly happens when a star is too small to become a black hole and too big to become a neutron star? That's where our new space object comes in. Scientists from the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory and the European Virgo Detector have discovered an object 2.6 times the mass of our Sun. Scientists think there's a chance this object is either the heaviest neutron star ever or the smallest black hole. Regardless of what it might be, scientists also discovered that this mysterious space object merged with a black hole of 23 solar masses. This happened 800 million light years away, but the gravitational waves it created were detected here on Earth. This could have created the most massive black hole to ever exist, but let's say this object, which is 2.6 times the mass of our Sun, didn't merge with a black hole. Instead, it came toward our solar system. What would happen then? Well, as the black neutron star came on the scene, Gravitational disturbances would disrupt nearly every object within the solar system. All planets, comets, asteroids, and everything else in space would be thrown into chaos. There's a good chance that this would throw the Earth out of the habitable zone. Our planet could end up wandering in the far corners of space. And with the planet being so far from the Sun, Earth's temperature would drop significantly. Luckily, this wouldn't happen right away, due to all the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. But soon enough, Earth would become a frozen wasteland. And since we're not entirely sure what this object is, the results could be very different. If the black neutron star were a kind of magnetar, then we would experience intense solar flares as well. A magnetar can release as much energy as our sun has emitted in 100,000 years in less than one second. As Earth is completely frozen, it would then be quickly heated up as the black neutron star gets closer, vaporizing nearly everything on the planet. Not to mention, it would also cause tidal heating. The strong gravitational pull coming from this massive space object would deform Earth by heating our planet's core. This would also give rise to massive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. And what if the black neutron star were just a really small black hole? Well, the results of it entering our solar system wouldn't be any less destructive. The black hole would slowly suck up everything in our solar system. It would grow larger and larger, making its way toward Earth. And once it gets to us, its enormous tidal force would pull Earth apart. And there's nothing we could do to stop it. There's also a chance that this black neutron star could be a regular neutron star that then becomes a black hole. This would result in Earth being quickly destroyed by all those consequences from before, and of course we'd all die. So yeah, sorry, we killed you a bunch in this one, but it just goes to show that we definitely wouldn't want these objects coming anywhere near us. A rogue star is headed straight for our sun. If these two stars slam into each other, it could spell the end of all life on our planet. How could a rogue star end up in our solar system? What would this epic collision look like? And how much time do you have to live? This is What If, and here's what would happen if a rogue star collided with the sun.
As the name would suggest, rogue stars drift through space. They don't belong to any particular galaxy, or if they once did, they've been ejected from their homes at some point by supernovas or two galaxies ramming into each other. Whatever it is that sends these stars hurtling away from the gravitational pull of their original galaxies, it fires them off at very high speeds. In order to break free of our own Milky Way galaxy, a star would need to move as fast as 550 kilometers per second. Luckily, our sun is only moving at a mere 200 kilometers per second, not nearly fast enough to become rogue. But these wandering stars aren't all that uncommon. They may even account for as many as half of the 200 billion trillion stars in the universe. And one of them could be headed toward our sun right now. Meet Gliese 710. This rogue dwarf star is on a trajectory that would bring it close to our solar system in around 1.3 million years. When Gliese 710 eventually reaches us, it would enter the outermost section of our solar system, the Oort cloud, at a speed of about 51,500 kilometers per hour. It could send the icy bodies out there flying in different directions, maybe even right toward Earth. Once it has reached Neptune, the countdown to the epic collision would begin. T minus 10 years till the impact with the Sun. At this point, you'd better just plan to live your best life while preparing for the upcoming apocalypse. The gravitational pull of Gliese 710 would destabilize the orbits of our planetary neighbors, nudging them left and right. This could go as far as pushing Earth out of the habitable zone. Or it could turn us into a rogue planet after unceremoniously being catapulted out of the solar system. After 10 years, it would finally be getting close to collision time. As each day passes, things are only going to get worse. One possibility is that the Sun and Gliese 710 would merge into a red nova. This would result in a violent explosion that would unleash nearly half a million times more light than what the Sun does right now. Given the amount of time light takes to travel from the Sun to the Earth, you would be blissfully unaware of this destructive explosion for eight minutes. But the moment you do find out, all that light would likely blind you in a millisecond and then immediately fry you on the spot. That's because directly behind this blinding light would be super hot gas. This wave of heat could be powerful enough to wipe out nearly everything in its path. Bye-bye Mercury, Venus, and yeah, Earth too. Our atmosphere and oceans would be completely blasted away. This would leave our planet as nothing more than a barren rock. The explosion would also have created massive amounts of high energetic neutrinos. These would be able to boil you from the inside out. Earth would also be shrouded in lethal levels of UV and gamma radiation. Even if you somehow managed to survive the explosion, you wouldn't last long from the harmful effects of all this radiation. You'd have damage to your eyes, skin, and even DNA. Now, if an alien species was watching this all unfold from a distant galaxy with an incredibly powerful telescope, they'd see a single bright star surrounded by an excess of reddish-colored gas. And the infrared light left behind from the explosion would be visible for a long time after. But that wouldn't be the only way all this could possibly go down. There is a possibility there could be a more peaceful alternative. Yeah, if the two stars are moving a bit slower relative to each other, 
they could end up merging into one massive new star as they orbit each other. Our Sun would strip mass from its smaller companion, Gliese 710, and swallow it in a process known as stellar cannibalism. Then, this extremely hot and bright star would be called a blue straggler. Though it may sound many times more peaceful, this option would still likely spell out the end of life on Earth. With our Sun now a massive blue star, the habitable zone of our solar system would be pushed further away. It's invisible, deadly, and sucking up every bit of matter in its path. The most massive black hole in the known universe is headed right toward Earth. What would you see as it started to slurp up the Milky Way galaxy? What kind of tasty dish would Earth become? And when it's finished with us, where would it go next? This is What If, and here's what would happen if the largest black hole entered our solar system. Black holes aren't that much different from any other object in the universe that has mass. Except that they are really, really dense. At their center is a singularity, an infinitely small point where all its matter is compressed. The more matter that's condensed into this singularity, the stronger the gravitational pull. Most black holes are the remnants of massive stars and generally range between 10 to 100 solar masses. For the record, one solar mass is the equivalent of 333,000 Earths. That's a lot of gravity. But supermassive black holes, which lurk at the centers of many galaxies, could contain millions or billions of solar masses. And scientists think that there are black holes as large as 100 billion solar masses, aka stupendously large black holes, or slabs. Catch one of these moving toward our solar system and get ready to wave bye-bye to all your conceptions of space and time. The largest known black hole, Tun 618, has begun its long trek directly toward our solar system, with its 66 billion solar masses in tow. And long trek is no overstatement. It would be traveling at least 10 billion light years to reach us. As it steamrolled through space, it would gobble every bit of dust and gas in its path. It would also snack on many stars before it even reaches the Milky Way. Depending on its route, this could mean hundreds of billions of stars added to its size. Before making first contact with our galaxy, it would have pulled in enough matter to disrupt its neatly organized spiral. You'd be able to detect its initial approach toward us as you observe the increasingly intense radiation it emits. Eventually, it would come bearing down on the last of the Milky Way's spiral arms, the Orion Arm. Tun 618 would gobble up its entire 20,000 light year length. It would be like an unbelievably long buffet line straight to the center of our galaxy. Somewhere along this line, it would finally knock on our front door. The Oort Cloud is a spherical shell of icy debris that surrounds the solar system. Or at least it was before Tun 618 showed up. It would then continue on its way and consume the Kuiper Belt, just beyond the orbit of Neptune. The danger to Earth would steadily increase as hundreds of thousands of icy bodies would be sent hurtling this way. As Tun 618 kept pushing forward, it would devour the ice giants Neptune and Uranus. And the gas giants Saturn and Jupiter would be pulled apart atom by atom. Not only the planets, but their moons 
and every asteroid that the giant black hole comes across. Any future plans by us to settle on Mars would be squashed as the red planet would end up right smack in the middle of this black hole too. And now there would be nothing left in the way of Tun 618 and Earth. Now, while the center of this stupendously large black hole would be almost 295 billion kilometers away, we'd finally be right up against its event horizon. That's the boundary marking a black hole's point of no return. The pull of its gravity would now be totally inescapable. Our whole planet would stretch out while simultaneously getting more and more compressed. Eventually, Earth would become like a strand of spaghetti slurped into an empty black void. Then, this black hole monstrosity would gobble up the sun in one big gulp. And now, at the center of what was once our solar system, Tun 618 would occupy nearly as much space. It would extend almost all the way to the inner edges of what used to be the Oort cloud. And since it's not polite to leave any food on your plate, Tun 618 would continue on its path toward the black hole at the center of the Milky Way, Sagittarius A star. As these two massive black holes collide, the collision would be so powerful that it could cause ripples in the very fabric of space-time. Imagine you're out for a walk on a lovely day with not a care in the world. The birds are singing and the sun is shining. Actually, the sun seems brighter than usual. And come to think of it, your skin feels kind of funny. It turns out that's not the sun at all, but the radiation and gamma ray filled light coming from a quasar. So in short, you're in serious trouble. How did a quasar even get here? And what would happen to Earth if a quasar moved into our neighborhood? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a quasar entered our solar system. I hope you didn't have any plans today because the brightest object in the sky has set up shop in our solar system. So what exactly is going on anyway? A quasar is the result of two black holes colliding to form a supermassive black hole with a central mass that outweighs our sun by a billion times. When black holes merge, everything goes out of whack. The two black holes begin to consume all the gas and dust from each other, along with anything else in the area. Okay, so if they're eating each other, why are we seeing that bright light? Well, the material that's thrown off begins to glow from pressure and friction, resulting in the blinding light you're seeing. If this were to happen in Earth's vicinity, it would be a result of the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy smashing into the black hole at the middle of the Andromeda galaxy, which is two and a half million light years away. If these two met, we'd be looking at a massive amount of infrared light being expelled into the universe. Oh, and it's also a harbinger of death and destruction, too. What would happen to our planet? Well, brace yourself, because this is going to be a doozy. Quasars throw off jets of particles that are so bright, they outshine all the stars in their galaxies. So our sun would essentially turn into a candle in the middle of a very bright spotlight. The illumination from a quasar, along with all the radiation it throws off, would mess with Earth's atmosphere. The light is enough to energize particles that make up the atmosphere and free them from Earth's gravity. Our atmosphere would be destroyed, and we really need our atmosphere. It's our protective layer that keeps things in order and regulates the temperature. Without it, the oceans would dry up, Arctic ice would turn into water vapor, and everything would get much, much hotter. In addition to it being blindingly bright, we would have no safe air to breathe, no plants to eat or feed animals, and there would be no water to drink. Life on Earth would be a write-off. 
This would all happen very quickly, so you wouldn't have to live through a long, drawn-out apocalypse. At least you can look forward to that. But could this sort of doomsday scenario actually occur? Well, yes, but not for another three or four billion years. At that point, the sun will be flickering out. And by that time, we're pretty sure something else we've covered on What If would have taken us out first, so we won't even be around to see it. A dark, mysterious object has appeared at the outer edges of our solar system. It looks like the remnants of a dying star, but it behaves like a black hole. Your mission? Traveling right into its heart of darkness. What makes this mysterious object unique? How dangerous would it be to experience such powerful gravity? And how might this turn into one of the strangest experiences in the universe? This is what if, and here's what would happen if you fell into a black neutron star. I know we've talked about black holes before, but let me do a quick recap. A black hole isn't much different from any other object with mass, except that it's really, really dense. All the matter it contains is compressed into one point called a singularity, which is so small and so dense that our understanding of time and space within it breaks down. That singularity is what causes black holes to have enormous gravity. And then there are neutron stars. These form when a large star collapses at the end of its stellar life. A star that was once one and a half times more massive than our own sun would now only be about 20 kilometers wide. That's no bigger than a city. But what you have lurking on the outskirts of the solar system is something else entirely. Too massive to be a neutron star, too small to be a black hole. This is a black neutron star. Not much is known about these objects, and what we do know, you're about to learn the hard way. For this scenario, let's ignore the fact that it would take you thousands of years to travel all the way to the outskirts of the solar system. Let's imagine that the best scientists on the planet came up with a way to roam our planetary neighborhood really fast. And now you'd be observing this gravitational monster up close. You'd know exactly where a black neutron star was making its catastrophic approach because of all the radiation it emits. This is the same way you'd find either a black hole or a neutron star. And just getting close enough to observe this star won't be enough. You need to venture right into its center. Your mission would require some protective gear, and this gear would need to keep you safe from some of the most intense forces of gravity in the universe. So don't take this preparation lightly. The black neutron star would be pulling you toward it with gravity about two billion times stronger than what you're used to on Earth. The problem is that the kind of intense gravity protection gear you need doesn't exist. Without it, your mission would be of the suicidal variety. As you got closer, different parts of your body would experience different gravity. If you were diving into this monstrosity head first, your upper body would get stretched a lot more than your legs. As you got closer to its center, you'd be spaghettified. Yeah, you'd become long and thin from your head down to your toes, just like spaghetti. Only this would be one brutally painful plate of pasta. 
but since you'd be on an incredibly important mission, you'd have the best equipment you could ever imagine. The best NASA scientists would supply you with a suit resistant to the extreme pressures, temperatures, and radioactive matter inside the black neutron star. Now would be the time for the task at hand. You'd dive layer by layer into an object of incredible mass. It would be like falling into our sun if it was squeezed into the size of a small city. On the outside, the black neutron star would look like any other kind of star, except that it would be really toasty. Your regular neutron stars are extremely hot, usually about 1 million degrees Celsius. A black neutron star? Well, you'd have to find out its temperature on your own. I bet it would be just as scorching. First, you'd pass through a gaseous layer of hydrogen and helium. After that, you'd find yourself on more solid ground. Scientists think that the second layer would likely be composed of iron and silicon. To continue your mission, you'd need to somehow punch through this blazing solid surface. Well, lucky for you, NASA equipped you with a super powerful drill that can withstand the heat and things would start getting dangerously dense. I hope those guys at NASA made you an extremely durable suit, too. Down at the heart of the black neutron star, you'd notice a unique material, one of the strangest in the universe. Scientists call it nuclear pasta. Inside the neutron star, the nuclear clusters get packed so densely that they create the hardest matter ever known. At least this time it's not you that's turned into spaghetti. If all this talk about you being turned into some sort of food item has you worried, well, brace yourself. The madness would just be getting started. Now you'd be so deep that the intense levels of pressure around you would be about three times higher than the density of an atomic nucleus. Protons and electrons would combine into neutrons. Hey, well, now you know how neutron stars got their name. As these newly formed neutrons start to overlap more and more, you'd keep traveling further and further down. Eventually, you'd find yourself face to face with the squished components of neutrons and protons, quarks. Finally, approaching the core of the black neutron star, you'd be nearing maximum bizarreness. Of all the squishy quarks surrounding you, there would be some so weird that scientists call them strange quarks. These quarks are heavier than other quarks and they've earned their name by possessing a property known as strangeness. All it means is that strange quarks have less chance of being torn apart by the black neutron star's electromagnetism. Inside this core, the strange quarks would form a soupy mixture known simply as strange matter. And encountering strange matter would be the very end of the journey for you. Strange matter is contagious. That means when it comes into contact with ordinary matter, like you, it would generate more strange matter. So as soon as you'd touch it, it would instantly dissolve your protective gear and immediately after that, your whole body. This is the most powerful object in the universe. The biggest spinning magnet to ever exist. It's the cosmic equivalent of a great white shark. But it wouldn't eat you. It would just turn all your atoms to dust. This is what if, and here's what would happen if a magnetar entered our solar system. If you thought neutron stars were big and scary, well, you haven't heard of their more powerful stellar cousins yet. Like neutron stars, Magnetars are leftovers from supernova explosions. They're just packed with a lot more matter. Their density is so high that a single teaspoon of a magnetar could weigh in at a billion tons. 
They're also the most magnetic stars we know about. We use a unit called a Gauss to measure the strength of a magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field is only about 0.6 Gauss. The magnetic field of a magnetar can be as strong as one quadrillion Gauss. How long would it take a stellar monster like that to rip our planet apart? It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if a magnetar was sitting quietly in our galactic neighborhood. But if it decided to stop minding its own business, there are two ways a magnetar could end all life on Earth, together with the planet itself. It could get too close to the planet. You'd start to feel its presence when it was about halfway between the Moon and the Earth. At that distance, a magnetar would erase the information off all your credit card's magnetic strips. Whatever you do, try not to get closer than 1,000 kilometers from a cosmic invader. Because if you did, your atoms would get stretched out of shape. Your bioelectric field would get scrambled, disintegrating your molecular structure. And your body would just disappear. Alternatively, a magnetar could destroy us from much, much further away. As if being the biggest spinning magnets in the universe isn't enough, magnetars can also be affected by something called starquakes. Starquakes happen when a star's crust cracks, letting massive amounts of radiation out into space. This blast of radiation could compress the Earth's magnetic field and partially ionize the Earth's atmosphere even from 50,000 light years away. We know this because we've already come a little too close on at least one occasion. In 2004, gamma radiation from a magnetar reached our planet from outside our Milky Way galaxy. In just one-fifth of a second, it released more energy than our Sun has released over the last 250,000 years. Move that magnetar and its starquake up to 10,000 light years away? And things would get much worse. First, it would destroy our ozone layer. Then, it would wipe clean most of the planet's surface, along with all life as we know it. The truly scary part of this is that we wouldn't even know the magnetar was heading towards us. It would be a blink and you're gone scenario. I won't lie to you, there are magnetars close enough that if one had a violent starquake right now, we'd all get wiped out very fast. When scientists began their search for these interstellar monsters 40 years ago, they didn't realize how many of them exist out there. You might find some comfort in the fact that most magnetars don't make it much past their 10,000th birthday. Their short lifespan ends with them becoming neutron stars. Still dense and still magnetic, but not nearly as dangerous as a magnetar. What would happen if you flew into a wormhole? Would you ever hear back? Where would you end up? Back in time? Another galaxy? This is what if. And here's what would happen if a wormhole formed in our solar system. You've probably heard of wormholes through Thor, Interstellar, Star Trek, or if you're really old school, Albert Einstein. In 1935, Albert Einstein and physicist Nathan Rosen came up with the idea of bridges in space-time. WTF? OMG! Sounds like you're catching on, because an Einstein-Rosen bridge, or a wormhole, is also a shortcut through space-time. A wormhole is less like a bridge and more like a tunnel. It's a tunnel that links two different points in space-time. And if you were to pass through it, you could end up in a different galaxy, a different universe, or 14th century Europe. Ugh. But only if you found a way to keep the wormhole from collapsing on you. The trouble is, no one's ever seen a wormhole before, and we probably won't find one anytime soon. The other problem is, if wormholes do exist in our solar system, they're probably microscopic. Any wormhole that could accommodate human travel would require a crazy amount of mass. Think about it. The smallest black hole is thought to be the size of an atom, but with the mass of a mountain. So, while we can't really calculate the mass of a wormhole that could fit a few of us in a spaceship, just know that it would be astronomical. And its gravitational pull would probably redirect the tilt and rotation of all the planets in our solar system. But things would go back to normal soon enough. Wormholes are incredibly unstable and are prone to collapse quickly. 
This is because the walls of a wormhole attract each other, which is why the wormhole would probably close shortly after it opened. Unless you had some exotic matter. Don't get too excited. Exotic matter is negative energy, and it's what you'd need in order to repel the gravitational forces trying to bring the walls of the wormhole together. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that such matter even exists in our universe. But if you're already set on making a trip across the universe, there's just one more thing you should know. The laws of physics say that you wouldn't be able to put enough negative energy into a wormhole to keep it from collapsing. But on the bright side, that rule hasn't been tested yet. So giddy up, space cowboy. Right on. Prove their existence. And we'll try to develop the necessary technology in your absence. But. Even if we could create wormholes and travel through them, would it be worth it? Is it worth tilting the Earth and rearranging the solar system just to visit another galaxy? Or go back in time? Read your history, read your science fiction, see all the movies and play all the games you want. But let's be glad our solar system is the way it is. Would we even be here if it wasn't? What would happen if you took the most energetic light source in the universe and smashed it into a massive gravitational monster. Well, you might reverse the flow of time. How would this event unfold? How could it affect time as we know it? And what would happen if you got too close? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a gamma ray burst hit a black hole. Meet your first fighter, a black hole. Not so different than your average object with mass, except that it's extremely dense. Most black holes are the remnants of massive stars, and they have lots of gravity. The mass of this black hole is compressed to a point called a singularity. At this infinitely small point in the center, conceptions of space and time break down. Today's challenger is a gamma ray burst. Not so different from your average burst of visible light. Oh yeah, except way more energetic. Gamma ray bursts are the strongest and brightest explosions in the universe. In one second, gamma ray bursts emit as much energy as the sun will emit during its entire 10 billion year lifespan. So if these two powerful phenomena collide, would space and time cease to exist? There are a couple of things you should know before we get underway with our space-time obliterating cage match. The first is that our two contenders already interact pretty often. A black hole releases a burst of gamma ray light when it's created. This burst spreads out evenly in all directions across the universe. So some of these gamma rays will certainly encounter another black hole or two. And these gamma ray bursts happen about once a day. They could flash for less than two seconds, or they could last for up to 30 seconds. The difference is whether the burst results from two neutron stars colliding to form a black hole, or whether it's the result of a star collapsing directly into a black hole without a supernova explosion. So if you managed to observe these phenomena, would you witness a magnificent explosion about a million trillion times brighter than the sun? Well, not quite. While some photons have just the right amount of frequency to be visible to your eyes, the frequency of gamma rays is way too high. Your eyes aren't advanced enough to see their beautiful bursts. But if you could see them, this insane amount of light would probably leave you blind. Now, surely this explosion must be loud, right? Well, once again, I come bearing bad news. It would technically sound like nothing. Yeah, sound doesn't travel in the vacuum of space. It needs a medium with 
particles to carry sound waves. But thanks to the scientists at NASA, a gamma ray burst would sound a little something like this. Okay, not exactly like this. These beautiful cello and piano notes translate the gamma ray frequencies into musical notes. Pretty mellow for such a massive explosion, right? But if you were close to this explosion, things would be anything but mellow for you. Gamma rays are hazardous. They can penetrate lead, concrete, and certainly whatever spacesuit you'd be wearing. As they pass through your body, they deliver an extremely high dosage of radiation. You'd suffer radiation sickness. You'd become nauseous, lose your hair, and even bleed. The energy could cause damage to your tissue and your DNA, leading to cancer or, worse, death. The gamma rays could cook you from the inside out. So you'd want to back up a little bit. Or better yet, reverse time. In 2018, researchers observing gamma ray burst pulses found that some events repeated themselves in reverse. That's right, it was as if they were moving backward. So what does this mean for you? Did you just stumble on a way to travel back in time? Again, I have bad news. This is merely an optical phenomenon. Light has the fastest speed in the universe, but this is only true for the speed of light traveling through empty space. In other mediums, like water, it would be possible for electrons to travel faster. That means if gamma rays could travel faster than the speed of light, they would give the illusion of reversing time. So yeah, it's possible I oversold you a bit on the idea that if a gamma ray burst collided with a black hole, it would result in the brightest, loudest, time-destroying explosion of all time. But in some ways, it's all true. Stars are gigantic balls of fire holding planets, asteroids, and meteorites in their firm gravitational grip. And their fire sends light into the farthest reaches of their galaxies. But how did they get here? I mean, these incredible orbs must have come from somewhere, right? What would it be like to witness this epic birth? What would it feel like at the center of the action? And why would this beautiful event have a funny smell? This is What If, and here's what would happen if you saw a star being born. The Milky Way galaxy spans about 100,000 light years across, and it contains somewhere around 200 billion stars. If there are that many stars in our little section of space real estate, imagine how many there are in the entire universe. Now, depending on where you look in the night sky, you could see around 5,000 stars just with your naked eye. The brightest ones have melodic names like Polaris, Alpha Centauri, and Betelgeuse. Looking further out into the universe with the help of telescopes, there are simply too many stars to name. That's the North Star. Well, what is that? That's why many of these are now identified more generically, like WASP-50, HD 28678, and HAT P23. But today, you're not just going to look into a telescope and name some baby stars. You're going to be in the thick of it the hot, dense thick of it. Every year, seven new stars are born in the Milky Way alone. Now, that might not sound like a whole lot, but keep in mind that our galaxy has already used up 90% of its star-making material over the billions of years of its existence. And yet, new stars are still being born all the time. 
Now, to witness their birth, you need to travel to one of the many star nurseries in the universe. These are known as nebulas. Nebulas are huge clouds of gas and dust that can span light years across. So, hop into your interstellar spacecraft and set your coordinates for one of the most famous stellar nurseries of our galaxy, a mere 1,344 light years away, the Orion Nebula. Yeah, it's here that you'd find the necessary ingredients for a star to be born. Gas, dust, gravity, and turbulence. Sounds like my car. Being in the middle of a nebula would feel like being in the clouds. You'd be surrounded by over 200 different kinds of molecules. There would be hydrogen and helium gas, as well as microscopic grains of silicon and iron. And I hope you packed some warm clothes because conditions in this cloud would be frigid. You'd need a spacesuit thick enough to withstand temperatures as low as minus 270 degrees Celsius. But don't worry, things are about to heat up. Suddenly, you'd be hit by a blast. This would be a ripple effect from an exploding nearby star, and it would cause the nebula to become turbulent. Uh, all it means is that the gases around you would start to mix and swirl together. It would be the beginning of the epic event you're here for. First, dust particles would begin to clump together. These clumps would become denser and denser, forming knots. Once these knots gain enough mass, they'd start to collapse under their own gravity, and their internal pressure and temperature would increase. Yeah, at around 2200 degrees Celsius, these high-pressure knots would emit a dull red glow. You wouldn't be able to see it because that light would be infrared, Oh, but you would be uncomfortably aware of the temperatures starting to rise. And things would keep heating up. Eventually, the protostar before your eyes would emit its first rays of visible light. Wait, do you smell that? Well, no, of course you don't. You're wearing a heat-resistant spacesuit. But if you could, you'd learn that this hot mass of dust and gas would also smell. It's disgusting. But not necessarily in a bad way. Depending on the mixture of compounds around you, you could detect hints of sweetness, lemon, or uh, even alcohol. But be careful, your baby star wouldn't only be pulling things inward. Every now and then, it would shoot powerful jets from its poles at supersonic speeds. These would flash brightly as they come into contact with the surrounding gases. All the while, the protostar would simultaneously grow and collapse under its own weight. This would make the core continue to heat up. Yeah. Once it reached the scorching hot temperature of 5 million degrees Celsius, you'd witness your baby star's first nuclear fusion. Deep within the center of the star, four hydrogen atoms would fuse together to form helium. This would release a ton of energy. And with all that energy, the protostar's pulsations would come to a halt it would finally become a star. Now, during the excitement of witnessing a star being born, you'd have seriously lost track of the time. If the star that formed in front of your eyes was similar to our sun, well, you'd have just watched 50 million years fly right by you. And you might want to get your hearing checked after experiencing all this. Of course, there's no sound in the vacuum of space, we all know that, but in the stellar nursery, filled with gas and dust, sound waves may have a medium to travel through. And if you were wondering what the birth of a star sounds like, well, it would be deafening. If we could hear our own sun, 
it would be a lot like Earth was covered in constantly wailing sirens, except multiplied by 10,000. A new star created by a series of violent contractions of superheated gas? Ugh, forget about it. Okay, now that your baby star is all stabilized, it could burn bright for another 10 billion years. We've thrown a lot of disasters at Earth over the years, from asteroids and aliens to the sun's death. But hey, the universe is a dangerous place, and we're not done yet. Now we're going to throw a black hole into the mix, and not just any black hole, but a blazar. How old is the oldest blazar? Why can we see some blazars, but not others? And what is the Doppler effect, and how would it let us know that a blazar is on its way? This is What If, and here's what would happen if a blazar entered our solar system. Black holes are found at the center of most galaxies. The Milky Way has a black hole that is four million times the mass of the sun. But that's small compared to other black holes out there. For instance, there's PSO J0309 plus 27. This galaxy is the oldest ever discovered at around 13 billion years old. And since the universe is only 13.8 billion years old, PSO J0309 plus 27 has basically been around almost since the beginning. At the center of this galaxy is a supermassive black hole that could fit 250 black holes from the Milky Way. Because of this crazy big black hole, PSO J0309 plus 27 is considered to be a blazar. And blazars are the most extreme type of active galactic nuclei, or AGN for short. But what are active galactic nuclei? Well, there are different types, a blazar being just one of them. But basically, they're galaxies with supermassive black holes that spew tons of energy, which could range from radio waves to gamma rays. Because they give off so much energy, they are the brightest objects in the universe. So, what makes a blazar special? Blazars are extremely rare. There are anywhere from 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies in the universe, and only one out of every 10,000 galaxies are blazars. But what makes them really spectacular are the jets of material shooting out from the top and bottom of their rotating disks. These jets are supercharged with magnetic fields and radiation. The material inside them can travel just under the speed of light, and their lethal radiation beams are pointed straight at Earth. Let me be clear, it's not just some blazars that are pointed toward us, but all of them. Any blazars that aren't pointing their deadly jets in our direction are invisible to us. So, what blazar would be the most likely to enter our solar system? Well, let's go with the closest one to Earth, Markarian 421 at 400 million light years away. How would we know it's coming, and when would it start affecting Earth? Well, scientists would know that Markarian 421 is getting closer to Earth almost right away. The light from the blazar would change from red to blue. Changes to the light's wavelength would cause this, and it has to do with the Doppler effect. This is a hard one to explain, so I'm going to use a metaphor. You've just pulled over to clear a path for an ambulance, and as the ambulance approaches you, its siren has a higher frequency, but once it passes and speeds away from you, its siren has a lower frequency. Both sound and light behave like waves, so you can use the same idea for the Doppler effect. When a galaxy moves away from you, 
the frequency of its wavelengths become lower and shift toward red. When a galaxy moves toward you, its wavelengths have a higher frequency and shift toward blue. Most galaxies in the universe are red-shifted because the universe is expanding. So, if Markarian 421 suddenly changed to blue, astronomers would know right away that it was heading toward us. How long would we have? Well, even at the speed of light, it would take Markarian 421 400 million years to reach Earth. But it doesn't have to reach Earth to cause damage. Its jet could be hundreds of thousands of light years long. Our galaxy is only 100 light years across, so Markarian 421 would begin blasting our solar system with radiation before it even entered the Milky Way. Blazars are also known to blast off from time to time. This giant flare can last from minutes to months. If Markarian 421 blasted off within a range of our galaxy, its jet would punch a hole straight through our solar system. It would be a doomsday scenario, and there wouldn't be anything we could do to save ourselves. This is the Sun. And this is a neutron star. But don't let its size fool you. Neutron stars are massive gravitational monsters, and orbiting one wouldn't end up well for our planet. But what if we took just a spoonful of it and transported it to Earth? Such a tiny amount of a neutron star couldn't possibly destroy us all. Or could it? This is what if, and here's what would happen if a spoonful of neutron star appeared on Earth. When a star about four times the size of our Sun explodes in a supernova, it propels its outer layers into space, leaving only a dense, collapsing core behind. A neutron star. Neutron stars are very, very dense. They could have the diameter of a small city, but their mass would be 1.4 times the mass of our Sun. Of course, no neutron star will ever appear on our planet by itself, First, you'll have to grab a spoonful of it and bring it back to Earth. You'll find the nearest neutron star, nicknamed Calvera, 617 light years away from Earth. If you jumped in the fastest spaceship we've ever built, it would still take you 11 million years to travel to Calvera. I'll have to fast forward here and meet you in the neutron star's neighborhood you'd be trying to get your spacecraft through a magnetic field that's tens of millions of times stronger than Earth's. Your ship's computers would be useless if they had any ferromagnetic materials like iron, nickel, or cobalt in them. You wouldn't want any of those materials anywhere in your craft. You'd have to dodge the electromagnetic radiation beams shooting from the star faster than you can blink. And then, when you finally manage to get to the surface of Calvera, you'd be immediately vaporized due to the temperatures being around 1 million degrees. Celsius, Fahrenheit, at this point, would it even matter? Any part of your craft that wasn't vaporized would be crushed by the star's intense gravity. But let's not end your story right there. Instead, let's equip you with a supersuit that could withstand the insanely hot temperatures and the extremely high pressure of a neutron star. And here you have it, a spoonful of Calvera loaded on your ship. Now what? If you tried to scoop the sun with a teaspoon, you'd only get about two kilograms of it. The same amount of a neutron star would weigh anywhere from one billion to six billion tons. You wouldn't be able to lift that spoon in the first place. And that's not even the worst part. Because the gravity of a neutron star is so intense, it fuses protons and electrons together. Only neutrons are left in that stellar core. When they aren't buried down inside a star, neutrons don't last too long. After 10 minutes, the scoop of a neutron star would break down into protons and neutrons and release as much energy as the sun produces in two or three seconds. Good thing you didn't have enough time to bring that stuff back to Earth. 
leave neutron stars where they belong, far, far away from us. And if one ever comes a little too close to Earth, jump on a spaceship and escape to another planet outside the solar system. But that would be a story for another What If. In the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, there is a supermassive black hole feeding on nearby stars. It's called Sagittarius A-star. And if a giant